Japan's nuclear regulators have approved a plan aimed at reducing contaminated water at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The operator will make an underground wall of ice to stem the buildup of contaminated water in the reactor buildings. Tokyo Electric Power Company plans to freeze soil around the number one to number four reactor buildings to create a barrier 1.5 kilometers long. The aim is to keep groundwater from seeping into the reactor buildings where it could be contaminated. The utility began work on the project last June. Workers drove pipes into the ground. The pipes are filled with liquid that will be frozen. The Nuclear Regulation Authority approved TEPCO's plan to move on to the next step. On Thursday, it will start freezing the liquid at 18 locations on a trial basis. If the ice forms as planned, TEPCO will seek government approval to continue the process at other locations. Students at high schools in Fukushima came together to better understand the nuclear disaster that poisoned their prefecture. They started a discussion group to look at what happened at Fukushima Daiichi and how future accidents can be prevented. NHK World's Jun Yotsumoto has the story. High school students in Fukushima prefecture have been learning by walking in the shoes of others. They've been taking part in a role-playing exercise about Japan's nuclear crisis. Some act as officials from the utility managing Fukushima Daiichi. As a utility company, we give top priority to employment and aim to restart power plants while considering the views of local residents. Some as affected citizens. What we have lost in the accident is the resource-rich sea we were proud of, which was our treasure, as well as the fishing industry and our jobs. The students studied what happened by reading the report issued by the independent investigation panel assigned by the diet. Their discussions don't really look at the pros and cons of atomic energy. The aim is to put the accident into a broader perspective. Students from Tokyo found out about the forum and decided they wanted to join in. They traveled to Fukushima. In the beginning, differences of awareness divided the two groups, but they soon found goals to share. Living in Tokyo doesn't mean the accident isn't our problem. If we go overseas, we'll be asked to explain. So it's important to think about the problem and take action. 
Then they were ready to role play. How are you prepared to deal with an accident involving a worker engaged in the decommissioning of reactors? We are waiting for instructions from the government. Instructions from the government? From where? I was saying we will make one based on the regulatory office's manual. So the regulator is going to make the manual for handling accidents that may happen during the decommissioning work. However, our priority is on health and safety, so we will do our best so workers will not have to work in unfavorable condition. You said the regulator will do it. Then what will you do? We wait for the regulator's instructions first, and then we will strengthen safety based on them. After the session, the students talked about what they learned. If you have a view that's inconvenient to your organization, you can't say it because you will be ignored. You can't speak up for fear of being ostracized. I thought that it may be easier to give up your view and follow others by taking on their opinions. The students concluded that organizational flaws contributed to the accident. For example, utility workers felt they could not say what they thought was right. After the discussion, the groups worked on a joint statement. They outlined how they could use the lessons learned from the Fukushima Daiichi crisis to ensure a similar accident never happens again. We wish to live in a future that... We will not compromise until diverse opinions are discussed thoroughly and everyone is satisfied. We don't want to be like a fish that just goes with the flow. We, the young, will continue to try to solve problems one by one, mindful of reality, for the problems won't be solved within our lifetime. The students from Fukushima and Tokyo hope to convey that message to as many people as possible, regardless of generation or nationality. Jun Yotsumoto, NHK World, Fukushima. A man arrested on suspicion of flying a drone onto the roof of the Prime Minister's office building is explaining his actions. He says he had meant to land the aircraft in the courtyard of the building. 40-year-old Yasuo Yamamoto from Fukui Prefecture turned himself in last Friday. He admitted to putting radioactive sand in the drone in what he claims was a protest against the government's nuclear power policy. Yamamoto said he collected the sand in the restricted zone near the Fukushima nuclear plant crippled by earthquake and tsunami in 2011. The suspect wrote on his blog that he operated the drone on April 9th from a parking lot 200 meters from the Prime Minister's office. Yamamoto added that he tried to land the device in the courtyard in the northern part of the office compound but gave up because of darkness. He wrote he tried to land the drone on the front courtyard in the eastern side of the site but lost sight of the aircraft due to the lack of radio wave signals. Yamamoto also wrote that he made an unsuccessful attempt to fly a drone carrying radioactive sand over the Prime Minister's office on December 24th last year. Police are investigating the drone's exact flight path and are reviewing their security measures. They have also instructed officers to watch for suspicious flying objects around the Prime Minister's office. What the industry ministry say new safety standards will make nuclear power more expensive. Their recent estimate for nuclear power generation for the year 2030 is 10 percent higher than their estimate four years ago. The officials cited the huge sums of money needed to compensate victims of the 2011 nuclear accident and to decontaminate the environment. That's on top of the cost for implementing additional safety measures required by the government's new regulatory standards. Still, at 8.5 cents per kilowatt hour, officials say nuclear power will be cheaper than other energy sources like thermal power using liquefied natural gas and solar. 
Those are expected to cost more than 10 cents per kilowatt hour. The officials are trying to decide on the optimal mix of energy sources to meet future electricity Officials needs. at the industry ministry are trying to figure out the best combination of energy sources to meet Japan's future electricity needs. The draft plan calls for the country's reliance on nuclear power to be cut to levels lower than before the 2011 nuclear accident in Fukushima. Ministry officials presented their proposals for the year 2030 to an expert panel meeting. The plan says nuclear power should make up between 20 and 22 percent of total energy. The figure was 28 percent before the Fukushima disaster. The plan also calls for Japan to more than double its reliance on renewable energy. Solar and wind power accounted for a little over 10 percent of supply in fiscal 2013. The officials suggest lifting this to between 22 and 24 percent. That will mean Japan's energy from renewable sources will exceed that from nuclear power stations. Reliance on thermal power is also on the reduction list. The ministry proposes cutting Japan's dependence on sources like coal from 88 percent in 2013 to 56 percent. The plan is drafted on the assumption that energy demand will fall by 17 percent by 2030. The officials say for the time being, people in Japan should make more of an effort to save power. A Japanese man is drawing on the power of the sun to brighten his family's future. He turned his back on nuclear energy after the March 2011 disaster, and he's developed a solar business with a message. A new solar power plant has come online in a prefecture north of Tokyo. It is the fifth solar facility to be set up by Yuji Onuma. He is a nuclear evacuee from a town in Fukushima Prefecture close to the damaged power plant. My life since the disaster was going nowhere. Finally, I feel like I'm taking a step forward after struggling for a long while. Onuma's hometown, Futaba, is uninhabitable now because of radioactive contamination. These days, he lives in Ibaraki Prefecture, but he still visits his old home once a month. At his living room altar, he tells his grandparents his family is doing well. There is one more place he goes to reflect. Nuclear power, energy for a bright future. The faded words of the slogan recall the town's prosperity when the nuclear plant was safe. The irony of the words is not lost on Onuma. In fact, he came up with them. As a sixth grade student, Onuma won top prize for his slogan in a town competition. He really believed nuclear power would enrich Futaba. I imagined the 21st century in which Futaba would develop along with the nuclear power plant. I even hoped a bullet train line would pass through our town in the future. But four years ago, the same plant he put so much faith in took away his job and his home. Onuma says that when he first went back to visit Futaba after the disaster, he felt embarrassed to see the sign that once made him proud. I think about that slogan which I made in elementary school, and I've come to realize how wrong I was. This sign is like a curse to me. The big change in his thinking came after he and his wife were evacuated, when their children were born. It inspired him to borrow money to invest in solar generation. Onuma believes renewable energy is essential if he is to help hand down a safe world to his children. I won't end up having the kind of life I expected, but I want our children to have a bright future instead. When his latest solar plant was ready to go online, Onuma added a finishing touch. He has put up another sign here.
I am determined to make a fresh start in my life with solar power. This business feels like a project I can be passionate about. The nuclear disaster that brought Onuma so much anguish and uncertainty has set him on a new path.